Hello everybody, John from Movie Burners here, I'm back with another movie review and today I'm going to be discussing the Oscar nominated Boss Baby. Yes, this has been nominated for an Oscar, you did hear me right, and I'm not really sure how. Not that it's a bad film, because it's not. Of course, directed by Tom McGrath, it's a visually alluring experience that, for me at least, doesn't have a very captivating story in it fell disappointingly short on laughs as well. It features a pretty excellent cast, spearheaded of course by Alec Baldwin and Toby Maguire, and it essentially evolves around sharing the love if you'd like, oh how the Beatles would be proud, and uh, also a seven year old with an overactive imagination who takes rather serious umbrage at his upstart newborn brother, disrupting his peaceful existence. And uh, that's really how things start out in this one. Much of this film is narrated and uh, shown through the perspective of Tim, played by Toby Maguire. And McGrath conveys very early on to the viewer just how unreliable a narrator he really is. As a young boy gushes about his fantastical adventures with his family, the world around him literally changes to reflect the fanciful happenings he's describing. And so when the newborn boss baby, if you'd like, played by Alec Baldwin, enters into the fray, literally walking up the driveway in a remarkably well-fitted suit and clutching a briefcase. It's fair to say the young Tim is perhaps projecting his imagination onto the proceedings to explain the situation, as uh, prior to this there is a brief glimpse of his mother's baby bump. Um, Tim isn't best pleased with the new arrival, I think it's fair to say, who has a short, visually appetising scene up in the heavens of Baby Cop, uh, slipping and sliding through a gleaming assembly line for newborns before landing into a sprawling office. Uh, the general gist of the wider story is that Tim is upset with having to share his parents' attention whilst his baby brother goads him with his hidden intelligence way beyond his years. Uh, he's been sent down on a secret mission by Baby Cop to garner as much information on a new breed of puppy that threatens to upset the love attention equilibrium between children, pets and parents alike. Uh, what falls is a, a real battle of the wills between the two, with Tim doing everything in his power to rumble the talking baby 007, though failing miserably it has to be said. Uh, now I'll admit there was one particular chase scene involving a squad of babies around this point that actually was quite good and was one of the better moments in the film for me. Eventually the two form a grudging alliance in the face of the new puppy co threat but mainly because Boss Baby tells Tim that he'll leave him to his paradisical only child existence again afterwards if they succeed and uh, the film transforms into a classic sort of a mismatched buddy style with the pair falling into the CEO of Puppy Co's dastardly trap during a take the kids to work day. Um, Francis Francis, played by Steve Buscemi, you see, was a one time legendary boss in the world of Baby Cop and is close to unveiling the Forever Puppy, a revenge fueled attack on his previous employers, and he only needs Boss Baby's magic milk formula to add the final touches to his creation. Once he takes this, it leaves the latter in a precarious fight against time to avoid transforming into an actual baby. The pair end up hitching a ride on a flight full of Elvis impersonators to Las Vegas, and a multi spear headed attempt at stopping Francis Francis from releasing the forever puppies on a rocket ship, I'm sure that's how we recall it anyway, my attention was beginning to waver at this point though, uh, to also see if Tim's now kidnapped parents, were they just on a business trip where they kidnapped, did this trip even happen, lord knows it could all be Tim's imagination, and finally to save Boss Baby from his nightmare of being sacked from his position at Baby Cop and becoming a literal drooling giggling newborn. Again, if this all sounds a little fanciful, do remind yourself that this is an animated kids film and it's supposed to be a jilted seven year old's imaginary take on events. Uh, the strong cast was a real positive point for this film amongst a great deal of weaknesses for me. Alec Baldwin was outstanding as the devious boss baby and his voice definitely added to the character enormously. Toby Maguire was also very believable as he's 7 year old Tim, you need to remember this guy is 41 years old, I don't know how he does it, I think he's the living embodiment of Dorian Gray, much like Keanu Reeves, and uh, the two leads 
played off each other very well, it has to be said. Meanwhile, Lisa Kudrow and Jimmy Kimmel, and also Steve Muscemi, were all decent enough in fairly relative cameo roles as the mother, father and Francis Francis respectively. Um, the fact I'm even calling their parts cameo should give a sense of how much the two lead characters really dominate the screen time in this film. Now, from a purely visual standpoint, this film gets a 10 out of 10, especially during Tim's spontaneous psychosis-like bursts of imagination. Unfortunately, though, we, we don't judge films solely on their visual merits. Uh, and I understand this film is probably not marketed at my age demographic, and I'm maybe being a little harsh. Um, it's a children's film, which is fine, but films that were released not long before this, in the ilk of Moana, Kubo and the Two Strings, and also Zootopia, all shared the same target demographic, but featured much more enjoyable, engaging stories that could really captivate younger viewers, whilst also having enough under the surface gloss to hold the gaze of adults too. And even this year we have Coco, Paddington 2, and a whole host of other animated films, which for me, utilise this much better. Boss Baby doesn't have this, it really doesn't and I did lose interest around the halfway point. It's not a brutally bad film or anything like that, but uh, and there certainly was fun moments scattered throughout, but I'd really only recommend this to families or people with young kids, and uh, as I says, I'm genuinely perplexed that it's managed to sneak an Oscar nomination ahead of the Lego Batman film, which for me was a far superior film. I'll be giving this film a 3 out of 5. Remember guys, if you're enjoying the content we're putting out, then be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube and iTunes, and give us a little follow on Facebook at MovieBurner Entertainment and on Twitter at MovieBurners. You can also catch up with all the latest reviews we're putting out at the MovieBurner blog on MovieBurnerEntertainment.org. Until the next time, goodbye.